Welcome to the tutorial on how to state the domain and range given a set of data, whether it was presented in a t-chart, just like number one here, an ordered pair, just like number two, or shown in a graph like number three. So what exactly is the domain? The domain is the set of all possible values for the independent variable in a relation. So if the domain is the set of all possible values for the independent, the range is the set of all possible values for the dependent variable in a relation. So when we look at our ordered pairs, for example number two, which one would be considered our independent variable and which one would be considered our dependent variable? The first number would be our domain number and the second number would be part of our range. And that would go for each one of the ordered pairs. So the first number would be part of our domain, second number part of our range. When it comes to the t-chart, the x values in this column would be part of the domain and in the f of x column those numbers would be part of our range. For our graph we're looking at our x and y axis. So our x axis would be the numbers related to our domain and the numbers on our y relate to our range. So that's great Miss Carla, I know which numbers how do I actually write them? We have several different ways to state the domain and range. The first one is simply with words. We can describe the values that are allowed by saying, if we look at our graph number three, we can look at it and say, all the numbers for our domain, <coughs> excuse me, they're the set of all real numbers between 0 and 4. Inclusive, because it does include both 0 and all the numbers up to 4. And then for a range, we would say it includes the numbers from 2, inclusive, up to 7. But 7 is not included. So that would be using words. So you would just state the domain is the set of, and then state the rest of it. And then you would say the range is the set of, and state the numbers that include. And don't forget, you do have to remember to say whether they're inclusive or exclusive. So whether they're included or not. We can also show it on a number line. So if I want to show the numbers on a number line, I can actually look at the t-chart. I'm going to use that as my example. So I have my my domain of four, four and a half, five, five and a half, six, six and a half. So I can show them on a number line. So because they start at 4, I might have my number line start at 0. And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then it keeps going. So I know I have, I start with 4 if we look back at our, and it's four, four and a half, five, five and a half, six, six and a half. So I'm actually going to put 
They start at four. They goes to six and a half. And I'm gonna draw a line. I'll put it in green so you can see it a little more clearly here. And these would be my numbers. So I can show it this way. And of course I'm using solid circle, a solid dot to show inclusive or that it's included. But what happens if it's not included? Well, if we look at the range for our graph and we see that seven here, that's an open circle. So if I wanted to show my range for that one, I would again, so I'm doing the range and I'm gonna use my numbers between zero and eight. Oh, I need a longer line. Draw another line back in here. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have solid at two. So I'll put a solid at two. I have an open at seven. If we see up here, it's open. So I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna put an open circle on seven and then I'm gonna connect them. So this shows me by the circle. So I have an open circle and that's to show that it is excluded. So I know that my numbers go from two up to as close to seven as possible, but does not include seven. I can list my numbers. So I can actually, when I list them, if I look at, let's look at our ordered pairs here. So I have one and one, five and two, nine and three, 13 and four, 17 and five, all the way up to 29 and eight. So I'm gonna list my domain and range. So if I wanna list my domain, I'm gonna set my, my bracket, and I'm actually just going to list all the numbers that are in the first position. So if I look here, I got one, five, nine, one, five, nine, and then I have 13, 17, 21, 13, 17, 21, and then 25 and 29. And I can do the same thing with my range. I can list that. And my range goes from one up to eight. So I'm just gonna range, write those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that's listing the numbers that are in my range. Now, the most common that you will see uh, in formal way mathematically to show the values for the domain and range is to do set notation. And an example of set notation is put our domain equals, we have our bracket to show our set of numbers, x such that, so that is such that, And now I need to pick what are my numbers arranged from. So let's look at our graph here, number three. So they go from zero up to four, but it's all the numbers in between. So I know that they go from zero to four and the numbers in between. So I'm gonna say zero is less than or equal to X, which is less than or equal to four, because that's what my numbers do. Now, Ms. Carla, what happens if we had a graph that kept going? So, say this one, this parabola. So we had x and then we had x squared. Those were our numbers. So if we had 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, we had negative 2, it would be 4. They would be both be 4. So I can see that my 
range is different than my domain. My domain starts here at zero and then for all the numbers it kind of keeps going because that doesn't seem to stop. My range as well starts at zero and keeps going but in the positive only. My domain has negative values and positive values. So what would that look like? My domain is going to equal x such that. Now I have two ways that I can write this. I can write this as negative infinity is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to positive infinity. And my range equals y such that, because we're dealing with the y-axis now, has to be greater than 0. So it has to be 0 less than or equal to y, which is less than infinity. Or I can state it as, for my domain, this is my alternate, x such that because I have negative infinity to infinity, that's all the numbers. So I can say x belongs to all the real numbers. Because it includes everything. So how can I do the same thing for the range? y such that, because it has to be greater than 0, I can say that y is greater than or equal to 0 and y belongs to the real numbers. And that'll achieve the same thing. So I actually have two ways here to do my set notation. This is the general form, but I can show it as this way, or I can show it as this way. And again, I'm looking at what is my lowest, and then where does, where's my highest? Now interval notation is when I only use the brackets. So I might put it as d equals, and I'm only going to put brackets, I'm not putting in my x or my such that sign, only the brackets. So I might say Let's look at this one here. So I have in negative infinity to infinity. So I might have negative infinity, infinity. And it includes them. So I'm going to put round brackets. But we don't, infinity is as far as it goes. So it just keeps going. So I'm actually not going to include infinity in it, so I'm going to use the round brackets. But for my range, I have the zero we definitely include, so I'm using a square bracket for that one. And then of course we have infinity with a round bracket. So the square means that it is inclusive. The round means that there's no end point here. So it's keep, it keeps going. Or it's used as when the number is not included. But I'd like to note that the most popular is set notation. This is the most popular form for domain and range. So let's have a look at a couple more graphs, since graphing is quite popular. So if I gave you the graph of a circle, and this circle is between 7 and negative 7, and then its upper limit is 3 and negative 3. So if I wanted to put this on a number line, then I would draw my number line 
and because it keeps going, so this is going to be for my domain, and then for my range. And I know that it goes from negative 7 to 7 for my domain. So I'm going to start with negative 8 and then go up to positive 8. I'd have 0 in here, and you'd have all your numbers. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, oops, there's a 1 in there. We'll sneak it in. So I know it goes from negative 7. There's my negative 7, and it includes 7 because that's included. And it goes up to positive 7, and I'll connect them, and there it is. If I want to do it by set notation, x such that, and of course it starts at negative 7, it's included, so less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 7. So this is my number line. And this one is set notation. Now my range, if I want to show it again as number line, it's going between positive 3 and negative 3. So there's negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, oops, 1, 2, and 3. So it's including in both. And I draw my line because it goes between negative 3 and 3. Now if I want to do interval notation, so I'm going to show it as inclusive, negative 3, to 3, inclusive. So just the square brackets. So interval notation and my number line. Now let's do one more where it's not included. So what if I have a line here and then it runs like that to here. And this point is 2, negative 2. And this point up here is 5, negative 3, we'll say. So what's happening here? So I'm going to do this as a number line first, just so you can see that one more time. So for my domain, my number line is going to be between 2 and negative 3. And if we know that negative 3, it's included here. We have a solid dot, so solid dot. My 2 down here is not included, so I have an open dot, and then I can combine them. Now, if I want to do this by interval notation, again, my negative 3 is included, so square bracket, and my 2 is not, so I'm not using a square bracket, I'm using a round bracket to show that it's not included. Let's look at the range. If I want to do this by set notation, I have my range equals, and what does it go between? 5 and negative 2. So I have y such that negative 2 greater than y not included, so no equal sign on the bottom here. It's greater than or equal to 5 because here the 5 is included. And if I wanted to do it as interval notation, I have open bracket, negative 2, because again, negative 2 is not included here, but my 5 is closed bracket. <coughs> 